The first free practice session of any new Formula One season is always an interesting time for technical experts like Jake Boxall Leg and our own Giorgio Piola, who's been roaming the pit lane in Australia. You tend to see the new bits that didn't quite make it to testing, or in the case of the first piece we're going to talk about now, things that have been brought forward from future races where they were expected to come later in the season. And that's what we're going to talk about first, Jake, with Red Bull. We were expecting to see upgrades on the RB15 in the Chinese Grand Prix, which is two races away, but the team managed to fast track some bits to Australia. So what did we see? Well, I think the main thing we saw was just the change in this front wing head play. Uh, Red Bull were rather happy with how things looked in their simulations and thought, you know, we can get this built ready for Australia. So they've come with this brand new front wing end plate. Um, it doesn't look too much different to what they were running with in testing, but what they're trying to do is just a little bit more, a little bit different. Uh, again, I know I've harped on about this probably far too much, but it's all about that outwash and they're trying to get <laughs> as much of it as possible. Um, so they've created this little cutout section here um, just to try and use this final flap to you know, bring a little bit more air in front of the tyre and then round the back. So what this does is this end plate here, the piece across the top at this corner here, it creates a tip vortex, but that's also going to create another one at this point as well. And they can kind of combine to be a little bit of a stronger vortex, if you like. And then, yeah, that just carries airflow around the front tyre. And again, it's just trying to reduce that tyre weight, make sure that it's not interrupting uh, the rest of the car essentially downstream. Now, Red Bull and Mercedes, we've kind of grouped their front wings together up to now, as they've been the teams that have stayed with a kind of big surface area in this part of the wing, haven't they? And Mercedes made this change, I believe, in Test 2 as well. So is this a way that the teams who haven't gone for the wing that kind of tapers away at the outside, like we've seen from Ferrari and, of course, the Alfa Romeo, is this a way of them trying to replicate some of that effect without giving up this area of the wing? Yeah, definitely, because they can create so much more downforce at this particular section of the wing. They're just trying to work it a little bit harder. Mm. Uh, other teams have persisted with using the middle section more for that. Um, you know, that's part of their philosophy. But Mercedes and Red Bull have found much more gains on this section of the wing. Um, and so, you know, they've not really wanted to compromise or give that up. So they've sort of tried to find a way to have their cake and eat it, essentially. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Ferrari, of course, the battle at the front and how Ferrari and Mercedes will stack up. And arguably, as you, as you will find out in our video from Australia with our guys who've been looking at the times, we didn't really get that answer today in practice. But Ferrari had something interesting on the front of the car, didn't they? So, yeah, Ferrari have turned up in Australia with very, very interesting sort of wheel hub design almost. And as I say this now, I've already confused our production crew with, uh, with this particular graphic in the fact that these are two very distinctly different upright sections and yet they're using them on the same car. Um, so this one is on the left hand side, and this one's on the right hand side. And because most of the turns around Albert Park, the braking zones are going into right handed corners. So that brake is doing particularly much more work than, than this one to try and get the car stopped. So you have what's called the Ackman steering geometry. So essentially the wheels to turn at a different rate. And so the outside wheel can move faster than the inside wheels try and get the right amount of turn in but at the same time this brake is still doing much more work and so there's an extra duct along the inside here uh, as well as this one this here. This one here. Yeah so that one there <laughs> is additional and then you've got the same on both sides this one here mm. and um, you know they could also be using this to try and bring a little bit of the blown axle effect back as well but um, yeah they're just trying to cool that inside wheel as much as possible and so just ensure that the brakes don't start to fade too much during the course of the race because that could be absolutely disastrous. Yeah Australia is a, always a tough race on the brakes and of course at the start of the season the teams probably want to go in with a little bit more caution than they might later on in the year. Let's move back down the grid a little bit to a team where we were expecting to see a big upgrade package and that is Racing Point. You know, they had their vanilla car, as they called it, in testing, and it was clear from testing that they needed to bring a big package of upgrades to get that car sort of in the mix in the midfield. How much did we see from them in practice today? So, yeah, Racing Point have come up with uh, quite a few upgrades for this particular race. Uh, as you say, it was a vanilla car, so this one's much more strawberry milkshake than vanilla. <laughs> um, probably the most obvious example is the new bargeboard geometry here. Um, so the third, essential, essentially a tooth along the top edge of the bargeboard. That now turns into a horizontal piece. This one here. Yep, that one there. So that now turns into a horizontal piece that essentially comes along here and connects to uh, the side pod turning vein. That's very similar to what Red Bull have got going on, what 
McLaren have as well. Um, so it essentially just adds a little bit more dimension, a little bit more options with trying to just take the weight from the tyre and turn it into something usable that they can direct around the side pods essentially uh, and try and protect the floor a little bit as well, um, working it a little bit harder. And then this particular piece here has changed as well. It was a little bit more, strangely enough, more complex on the previous, <laughs> on the previous uh, iteration. But what's happened is they've tried to be a little bit more deliberate about it, a little bit more pragmatic with just essentially just taking as much tyre wake from this massive swirling air that propagates here, just sort of collecting it up, cleaning it up with this one, then being able to clean it up with the underside of this one, then sending it on its merry way down the side of the car as well. So there's been a few changes in the barge board. We can also see the mirror as well. It's a lot different to what it was before. It was very conventional twin mounted mirror before, but now they've come up with these very elaborate mountings. Um, that looks like another little wing has been added, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, you can see the little, oh, they're almost vortex generators on the top side as well. Um, this is a little bit of a, a flow conditioner here, so you can sort of see it beginning to just direct flow over towards this point of the side pod here, letting it drop down and just carrying it as much around the floor as possible. It's, we're seeing a lot of mirrors being used as aerodynamic mm. devices now. Um, we know that engineers would prefer not to have them on there at all, but since they can, since they have to, um, you know, they're trying to make them as beneficial as they possibly can, really. There's also been a change to the brake ducts as well. As you can see, it's just been doused in flovers just so the racing point can get an idea of what it's, how it's actually performing. Um, there's a very tiny little fin here. There's a little cut out here. And it's very, very clever because what they have had to do, the these new regulations is essentially pare down on what furniture they can have around it so they're trying to use the brake duct as much as possible but you're only allowed essentially what's a five millimeter protrusion from essentially the plane at the center of the wheel so by sort of pushing the the brake duct geometry in a little bit then they have a lot more space to play with so it's sort of quite a clever circumvention of the rules we saw Mercedes do it in testing a few other teams as well gravitated towards that that fin is sort of very sharply, acutely <laughs> angled downwards, and it's just taking whatever flow sort of spins off and comes towards the centre of the tyre and just sort of brings it down and brings it into a little bit more play along this way, just to sort of take it out of the equation in, you know, generating wake and such things like that. So, yeah, it's quite a sort of clever design. They've also gone with the little raised suspension mounting point as well, which a number of teams have done. So, yeah, it's looking a lot more detailed than it was in Barcelona for sure. Yeah, and a great example of how just when the rule makers change the rules to try and tidy this area up, the teams will find some way to add back the complication and the sophistication that gives them better control of the air. And let's move to the back of the field and the team that was effectively four seconds off the pace today, and that's Williams. We've just got a bit of housekeeping here, really. We spoke earlier in the week about the fact that the team was making some changes to its car to ensure it was legal when it got to Australia. We've now had images come in from Giorgio in the pit lane of what those changes look like. So if you could just run us through what the changes are and, and really how maybe conventional the new design is. So yeah, uh, essentially Mitt Williams have had to come up with this brand new mirror design. It's a lot less outlandish than the previous one. Um, they're still using some kind of shroud to try and manage the airflow as much as possible. Essentially this mirror section here it creates a low pressure zone behind it and so this shroud is trying to direct a little bit more air through pull it through um, and try and negate the amount of drag produced that way um, the previous mirror that was producing quite a sort of I wouldn't say a hefty amount of outwash but it was certainly generally helping with the general effort and they're not able to do this anymore so they've got to find other ways of trying to recoup that try and negate the negative effect that these mirrors have on the rest of the car uh, whether it generally fits into the aerodynamic package that they've kind of based the car around, uh, that remains to be seen. But, you know, Williams are so far off the, off the back of the field that, you know, it doesn't really matter what they do too much in this area, as long as it's legal, uh, as long as it's generally beneficial, then whatever they can do to help work out, I'm sure.